and welcome to a new video series, Views from a Business Leader. My name is Joe Bailey and I am the President of the West Berkshire Chamber of Commerce and in my day job I am the Managing Director and Founder of Generate UK. We're a full service digital marketing agency employing 25 people here in West Berkshire. Now in my role as Chamber President, I speak to many businesses on a weekly basis and we all share one thing in common at the moment, which is life and running a business is very different to how it was two to three weeks ago. Now the aim of the series is to speak to other business leaders and to gain valuable insights, information and top tips to put into place to help you during these uncertain times. At the end of the video there's a number of links which are useful links to other sources of information which will help you as well as my contact details. So if you'd like to get involved or simply just to talk business please feel free to contact me. Thank you. Thank you for agreeing to um, ha have this call with me, basically, and just to, to talk a little bit about around your, your challenges. Robert, if you could firstly introduce yourself and um, your business title and, and t tell the viewers a, a little bit about what you, what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, my name's Robert Holland. I'm a managing partner of James Cooper Creston. We're an, an accounting for, uh, accountants and business advisors here across the Thames Valley. We've got offices in Reading, Oxford, Newbury, uh, Southampton, Henley, and a small office in, 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 in London. Um, we've got about 200 people. Uh, we turn over about 17 million. Um, we're very much partner owned and led. Uh, I'm managing partner, so I have overall leadership responsibilities for the firm, but we, we, we are, we're all quite involved as, as partners. Uh, and, and I have to say that um, I was looking forward to coming towards the end of my period as managing partner, which was due to, well, it is going to run out at the end of April uh, right. and have a, a nice quiet run in where the firm was looking good. Two weeks ago, the firm was looking was looking good. Everything was fine. The economic landscape was 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 wonderful. Actually, probably a bit longer than two weeks ago, three or four weeks ago. Uh, uh, everything was looking good at that point in time, but obviously a lot can change in a very short period of time. Absolutely. So how has life been over the last sort of two to three weeks for you personally? Um, I think anybody who isn't slightly nervous, scared, uh, or shows some kind of fear at the moment um, doesn't really understand the situation. Um, having said that, the best that you, all you can ever do is the best you can do. So we we've tried to react fairly quickly, uh, appropriately. Uh, and I think that the, 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 one of the bigger fears I've got is working out what to say when, uh, because you don't want to sort of do too much too early, but similarly, you don't want to do too much too late in terms of how you react to these sorts of things. So trying to carry everyone with me, I think, is and carry ca carry them everybody from you know because they're all they're all feeling different things at the moment. With 200 people, you've got a, a whole range of emotions in terms of the, in terms of the staff and in and in terms of our clients. Clearly, they're all having different experiences as well. I mean, we we deal with a broad range of businesses across the Thames Valley. Um, actually, for some of them at the moment, this is an opportunity. Um, for a lot, obviously, this is causing great difficulties, and for a few, it's a disaster, as you would expect in the industries you'd expect it to be so. Yes. So, what what is the advice um, to your clients at the moment that you're sort of, as you've just said, some are taking this as an opportunity, some are a little bit trepid, some are really in in dire straits, and is is the advice relatively straight down the line or, or are businesses how, how sort of flexible do businesses now have to be uh, I think businesses now have to increasingly be flexible because uh, and that's just the nature of the, the, the economic economic landscape that we're in um, I think it varies from client to client because we, we do a whole range of people and, and they prefer to take data or advice or information in different ways um, a number of things we're doing um, and we're helping some people work out some projections going forward just to make sure that they've got enough resourcing uh, going forward to actually get home uh, over the next three to four months. Uh, we, we've, our website is constantly updated as soon as new, as new government uh, announcements come out. And we put on some, some granular detail about that because clearly what often happens is inevitably when you've got a, a press conference, you make a statement that lasts for five minutes. There's a lot of, yeah, but what about that, that lie beneath that? And we try to answer those, yeah, but what about? Uh, one of the but one of the busiest departments we've got is our payroll function at the moment. Obviously, clearly, we're dealing with an awful lot of people who are considering furloughing or adjusting their their, their, their employees 
uh, hours and hours and, and conditions. So, so uh, it's a whole range of things, really. And a lot of it is just ringing up, talking, reassuring uh, business owners. Um, a lot of people, particularly uh, those who work on their own, can often be be very feel a bit lonely sometimes, and particularly at these sorts of times. Uh, I, I don't. Uh, it, it's just in terms of having someone to talk to about their their hopes and fears, and and particularly their fears at the moment. I, I think it, it is something that, that they found useful to bounce off. I mean, I've got typically two or three calls in a day to my clients because I still run a, a portfolio of clients. Yeah, uh, yeah. A, a course a day to my clients really just to go through things with them to make sure they're okay and see if there's anything we can do to help if do you think you would have done anything differently if you'd have sort of looked back at sort of three weeks pre sort of coronavirus to now where you are now you, as, a, as a, a business leader would you think oh i, I wish i had done that then uh, rather than that the, the only obvious thing and it is an obvious thing is is we our credit lines uh we, we, we're, we're a healthy business. We've, we've got reasonably good credit lines. Uh, uh, if I could have maxed out my credit lines four weeks ago, uh, <laughs> it would have been it'd have been brilliant because actually we'd have had been walking through where we are now with with absolutely no, no concerns, worries, or anything. I'm not worried anyway. It's just it's just that actually if we'd have been able to do that, we'd be so bunkered against this that almost anything could happen and we'd be okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. I think one of the challenges that I've spoken to other business owners is how do you plan when you don't know the future and I guess um, I, I think what we're doing how we're doing is we've we've just set a budget because our financial year ends in, in April so our our budget is basically been reset because uh, we had one before that we were ready to go with but we can we threw that away we just deliberately reset it cautiously and, and absolutely prudently uh, and even then uh, we, we we've decided to add some more contingency into that just to see we, we've stretched that to see okay if this is wrong what you know let's sensitize that to see how long it is that people uh, have, have to go uh, to pay us before before we begin to get into trouble so i think that's the thing i would do is actually flex any plans you've got for the worst case scenario and, and and see what happens it's a bit like if you look at banks um after 2008 what that, what, what what's happened with the bank of england and this relationship with the uk banking sector is that they've stress tested them. So in the good times, they've said, well, what happens if this happens? And that way we know that actually our banking system at the moment is remarkably robust as a result. Very good. Um, another sort of question is around sort of the employee wellbeing. Um, and obviously you've got 200 staff that are yeah. all scattered around the, the, the south of England, I'm guessing, and potentially overseas. Um, what sort of measures are you are you sort of looking at working with your sort of management team to put in place for for staff at, at these sort of times? At, at a very basic level, everyone has a line manager, and we've basically asked all the line managers to actually get in, get in contact with them on a regular basis, so that because clearly they're all now working on their own, whereas they used to go into offices and things. Um, wherever possible, to make that video as opposed to, as opposed to audio, and and you know we 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 were already as an as as a comp as a firm. Uh, able to pretty much work anywhere in the world anyway so we were all we could it was probably less difficult for us to become a completely virtual firm which is what we are now are um than it, than it possibly would be for for some others but um the other thing that we do is we try and put around guidance and help on a regular basis from our hr team in terms of places they can go to find things even down to things like online games to, to keep the children amused while you're working uh, that you know there's there's, there's, there's stuff that we, we are trying to do uh, and we will continue to do so over the next few weeks. Very good. And in terms of business networks, I know James Cooper Creston are part of the, the, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, yeah. the Thames Valley Chamber of Commerce. How important are networks in these times? I, I think they're particularly, uh, they're particularly uh, important uh, as, as, we, as we go forward because, I mean, even our own name, James Cooper Creston, Creston is actually our international network across the world. And clearly at the moment, we've got other countries, some of whom are actually having a, a situation far worse than we are. If we're, I mean, our, our Spanish and Italian colleagues are obviously having particular difficulties at the moment. Um, but uh, and, and I suspect our American colleagues are, are, are pretty much there as well. Um, but actually, there's a, there's a phrase I've actually heard from, from, from one of my clients this morning that actually said, uh, this is a this is a period where we're giving gets. So if we can all help each other and, and give a little bit, then 
then actually that will get us through this a lot easier than if we just uh, put, set up, shut up shop and actually raise the drawbridge to the ca castle. And I think that will get us through this so much easier. Uh, and I, I, I sense there's a lot of goodwill at the moment uh, for people to help each other wherever they can. Absolutely. And actually the networks themselves are particularly important because of the connections you've made there give you that much e easier access to to information, data, uh, support, uh, where you can find things. And it's that information flow which is critical at this particular time. Absolutely. So to sort of summarise from your perspective, what, what sort of the top two tips that you would give a business director, business owner at the moment? Um, the, the, num the number one is, is that, is that uh, you've always got to remember that everything you do and everything you say and every gesture you make is always going to be uh, looked at, remarked upon, even on video, uh, it, it, it massively by anybody who works for you because they'll be looking for signs that, to see what's wrong. And, and if, if someone's pessimistic, they'll be looking for confirmatory bias that they're feeling. So be absolutely obsessed about not making about making sure that you don't inadvertently say something you don't mean in terms of in terms of where we are in the current situation. And I think the second thing is is always try and be slightly ahead of the problem. Uh, that's very easy to say and very hard to do. And you know, you're going to get blindsided by some things as we go through this. But wherever you can, if you're someone who, does, who naturally puts things off, now is not the time to be as you naturally are. I think you have to basically work as outside your comfort zone a bit and, and look forward to actually just deal with things slightly ahead of time. I think if you do that, um, those, those two things, you'll go a long way to helping. And the first and most important thing is make sure you talk to your customers. Uh, I, I know you asked for two, but I'll give you three anyway. Um, <laughs> talk to your customers and suppliers at all times in great detail, use the relationships you've built up with them and actually try get through all this together. Robert, that's fantastic advice. Um, thank you very much for giving up your time today uh, to help other business owners, directors in, in these challenging times. So much appreciated. No, no problem. And yeah, and by all means, anything, our, our website's got all the information that's available to our clients. The, cha the chamber's got a whole load of stuff up there. Use what, what's available. Thanks. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you.